This is the Serengeti as never seen before. Viewed through the eyes of East African guides Richard Knocker and John Vikivuyu, award-winning wildlife photographer Paul Joynson Hicks and inspirational filmmaker Eliza Powell. For the first time in decades, this extraordinary wilderness stands almost empty. A unique but bittersweet time to be here. Over eight days, they'll be bringing you a rare glimpse of the Serengeti and all its inhabitants in a visual diary. We hope this encourages you on your own Serengeti safari, so together we can continue to conserve this precious wilderness. Good morning, Serengeti! Whoa, I blew the pants off that Kigalia that time. So, Ricardo, uh, what are you up to? We're heading east. We're going to head back to Bolo Bridge. I suspect we'll end up going up towards Gardenia and poke around in the Corongo there, see who's lurking. All right, wicked plan. See you later, alligator. Bye, Blossom. It's with the wildebeest this morning, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, we have seen a lot of small groups separated. Yep. And. Um, and sort of moving all that, they're milling around, aren't they? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of grass still around the area, so that you know, yeah. they will probably be yeah, spend more, no, more no, rush. Time, no rush to yeah. cross the river. Yeah. So, these, um, this Ellie bull, he's in mast. So, if you look on the side of his face, uh, you'll see his temporal gland is leaking this sort of fluid the fluid is it's a protein based thing called temperin um, and then you see leakage from his penis into his bat legs uh, he is ready to mate okay this is this is really heartbreaking because um, this bull elephant in front of us has had has lost probably about a foot of his trunk. Now, this is a crucial part of their livelihood. As you can see, he's feeding, and he's feeding fine, and he looks strong, he looks fit, but it's, life is so much harder for him. The, the trunk is, his, is their elongated nose, so they can't drink or eat through their trunk, but they use it to rip and tear foliage and bark and things like that. And uh, at the end of the trunk, normally they have these little fingers if you like, and you can see the dexterity is substantially more uh, useful. Um, and the, the reasons it's probably happened, it's maybe one of two reasons, so either um, he went for a drink and there was a crocodile that came out of the water and grabbed it thinking it was something else and just ripped it. Um, alternatively, uh, it's possible it was caught in a snare. That that's why the Serengeti Safari team is very proud to support the Frankfurt Zoological desnaring program. We did last season and we're going to do it again this season. So if you'd like to support them, you can see here how crucial it is. Please just click on the link down below and drop them some cash because it's great work. All right. So in our first series, we got the Serengeti here. We're in the short grass plains of the southern Serengeti at Nabi. And then we moved up for our second series to here, to the Serenera central area. And we did take a, a, a leap out into the west, where we went to the Grometi and saw the river crossings there, last series. So now, we've gone all the way up to here. This is the northern area of the Serengeti. Here is the Mara River, going off into Kenya. And that's where we've seen the river crossings so far. And uh, so this is the area that we're coming. And the migration is now moving up here through the Lamai Wedge and into the Masai Mara. Really exciting. We just saw a, a battala, which is this beautiful raptor in the top of this tree. Beautiful, strong morning sunlight. So that's perfect for bird photography. And, uh, and so we've got a lovely picture of him sitting on this branch. And then as he begins to take off, Lovely, stretches his wings, there we go, up. Ah, oh, and then I lose him in the top of the frame, which is a shame, but then cha-ching, look at that. Nailed that, nailed that. Okay, so one other thing. The scientific name of the battler is Terethopius echaudatus, which is so cool, it's one of the coolest names. And it, Terethopius translates to mean a wonder, a marvel, or a meteor. Oh, so an echaudatus uh, means no tail. So 
basically, if you're watching this, now you know the scientific name of the battler means a meteor with no tail. How cool is that? Uh, Richard, um, this group coming through the, through the woodland, it seems like they might have gone across. Oh, it's looking so good. I, I'm, this, I'm feeling really good about this. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Richard, they are crossing. Oh, wow. This is amazing. They're crossing back again. They've only just crossed in the last few days and they're coming back already. This is weird. Yeah, very weird. Because these, you know, they see this this one on this side. That's why they're probably they're crossing yeah, back. I bet again. you're right. This is yeah. amazing. Amazing, amazing, photography. Now macro photography is when you photograph something really really close up and usually for macro photography you need a macro lens. So that's what I've got. Nikon, you call it a micro lens, Canon and I think everybody else calls them macro lenses. So they're not very expensive and they can be really really effective. So let's just have a look. So I've got my beetle friend here who's very kindly just wondering about. Now with a macro lens, you've got to get very, very close. So if you're photographing wildlife, you just have to be very aware that you don't disturb or harm the animal at all. So that's the first thing. I'm not doing that. Second thing is, and the key to macro photography is being down at the level of whatever you're photographing. If it's a bug or if it's a flower, or anything at all, be at the same level as it. Don't be shooting down on it. I mean, obviously there are certain cases where that might be good, but generally speaking, do that. So the second tip, so the first is be at the same level, and the second tip is wide open aperture. So I want a really shallow depth of field. So I'm shooting at f2.8, and uh, let's have a little look, see how this beetle is gonna turn out. So I'm gonna focus on his head, Okay, there we go. Ah, and he's moving, which is tricky because I got a really shallow depth of field. He stopped moving. Okay, there we go. Ah, so it's really difficult because you've got a shallow depth of field. So don't be shy to take lots of photos and focus off, focus on, focus off, focus on. And then you'll get your focus right at the point you want it because it's really difficult, especially when you're so close and you've got such a shallow depth of field. Right, one more go. Oh, now his head's, ah. Oh yeah, that's better, that's better. There, now I'm focusing off and focusing on. Hang on. Oh, this is ridiculous, photographing a beetle. <laughs> now I'm gonna leave him in peace. Okay, bye, beetle, thank you. 